people and ideas you need to hear. Hey guys, welcome back to Let It Out with me, your host, Katie Delbout. This is basically live. I'm recording this at the very last moment to release it on the day it's released, so It's more live than most of the podcasts. Usually I'm recording them like a week or so, at least a few days before they air. So this is me almost in real time. And there actually wasn't going to be an episode this week at all. I didn't have time to record one with the holiday and I thought it would just be a week off. But then I had an idea. I thought that I would give you 16 things I tried in 2016 that I thought might be helpful, interesting, I don't know. I just wanted to share. So anyway, here's my kind of year in review before we get into 2017. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this year. If you're new and this is your first time listening, thank you for listening right now. And I just thought I would kind of reflect on the year that just is now almost behind us before we get into 2017 coming up. It was a really big year for me and for everyone, I guess. I think 2016 had zero chill, basically. Between launching my book and I interviewed my dream podcast guest number one and a bunch of other people who I was really excited to interview, I made a lot of new friends, I went to a lot of places I've never been before, Not to mention, you know, those are just the personal things that happen like just to me as like one tiny human on this planet, but not to mention all of the cultural and political extremes that we've had in this year. It's just been a year of extremes and and kind of craziness. So I thought that I would talk about some of the things that happened this year and some of the things I learned about myself during this year. And As I was doing this exercise, which was very cathartic, and I highly suggest you doing this to yourself, but I realized that my life is is pretty different today than it was a year ago today. I use that app TimeHop religiously. Do you guys have that app? It shows you what you posted a year ago or two years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago sometimes. It's fascinating. It's it's really cool to kind of like see the growth. I don't know if it's healthy, but I check it like first thing in the morning and I am really into it. Anyway, it it just hit me looking at that today, how much my life has changed. And I'm honestly feeling a lot better than I was feeling a year ago. And I think some of the things I tried this year that I recommend trying were really the culprit of, of why I feel better now, or at least helped. So here are some of the things that I tried this year that I think contributed to my growth and happiness, hopefully. And I've said this before in the podcast, but I think stagnation is really the only thing we should fear. And it's my only goal for 2017 is that I keep growing and I keep changing. And so, yeah, here are the 16 things that I tried this year that I recommend trying. So I'm going to go through these somewhat quickly. And if you have any questions or you want to know more or you want to tell me some things that you tried this year that you think helped you, I would love to know and I would love to try them. So here we go. Number one, go on trips by yourself. I did this a bunch this year. I traveled a ton and I traveled by myself every time I traveled. I didn't travel with anyone at all. I I visited people, which is another thing I wanted to mention. Visit friends. Just buy a ticket. Use your credit card points. Just do it save the money. I think traveling is so important and I think going places by yourself and being unafraid, you don't need someone to go with you if you want to go to a retreat in Hawaii. I just went by myself. You don't need someone to go with you if you want to visit a friend out of state. You can take a road trip by yourself. I actually highly recommend it. Get a good audiobook, listen to some podcasts, call friends. I love driving on my own and that's something that Even a couple years ago, I probably wouldn't have done. I would have thought that if you're going on a trip, you need to bring people with you. And now I'm so comfortable traveling on my own. I'm almost a little bit nervous to travel with people, which I think is not healthy and also something that is good to do. So anyway, go on trips by yourself. Try it if you've never done it before. Just travel as much as you can and prioritize it if you can. I know that it's expensive to travel 
And I know it's a very privileged thing to be able to travel. And I'm definitely very fortunate and very grateful. My life is set up in a way that I can. And I actually have to travel quite a bit. And I love that. But I would say prioritize it maybe over some other things because it really does open your eyes. And I haven't done the most exotic traveling this year, but I hope to in the future. And I hope to go all over the world. So let me know where you really want to travel to next and where you went in 2016 and where you want to go in 2017. Number two, learn to meditate and actually work it into your routine. That's something I did this year. I learned TM meditation, transcendental meditation. If you've been listening to the podcast, you've probably heard me talk about this several times, but I learned this at the end of 2015 and I worked it into my routine because it was something I committed to. It was something that was gifted to me that I was really like, all right, I'm taking all the time to learn this. I'm going through these steps. I better actually do this. And it stuck, which I'm actually pretty proud of myself that I've been doing this for a year and I've missed my meditation, you know, a handful of times, but I didn't miss it and say, oh, well, Never mind. That was a thing I did for a couple weeks, but forget it. I was like, well, I missed it yesterday. I'm going to do it again today. And I kept doing it every day. And when I missed it, I didn't beat myself up. So that's the lesson here. Not necessarily to start meditating and working into your routine, which is part of it, I guess. But I think the big part of it is that when you f- make a new routine, whether it's meditating, whether it's you know some other positive habit, if you do miss it, don't beat yourself up and don't stop doing it because you missed it once, just keep doing it again and start again and again and again. When you forget, remind yourself and begin again, 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 which is what you do meditating, ironically. You forget that you should be thinking the mantra. You forget that you should be breathing or however you choose to meditate and you are lost in thought or you're spiraling if you're like me or you're thinking about something silly. But then you remember and you come back to the mantra or your breath or whatever and then you forget again and then you remember and then you forget and then you remember. And there are some days when I am in the forgetting the entire time, the entire 20 minutes, you guys. But then I remember, maybe at minute 19 or maybe not, but I do it again the next day and I keep doing it and I keep doing it. And I don't know if I can quantify if it has helped me, but I'm glad I'm doing it. And I like the way I behave a bit more when I do do it than when I don't. So yeah, try meditation. Number three, trust your stylist. So I mean hairstylist here. And the reason I say that is because they know better about your hair than you do unless you are also a hairstylist then you probably know best about your hair but I highly recommend doing something crazy to your hair because your hair is changeable I never thought I would be suggesting this because my hair had basically been exactly the same since high school (laughs) and I dyed my hair pink last week and I trusted my stylist completely I just said do it and with a lot of like hemming and hawing if I would actually do it. But then I did it and he did an amazing job and it's been so much fun. I've only had this hair for a week, but I'm already loving it. And it's already made me want to change my hair more and more and more and do bigger things, you know, not bigger necessarily. My hair's already really big, (laughs) but you know, just do different things and more extreme things and get a tattoo. And I don't know, I just think, switching it up is really important especially with your hair you know because it's just hair you can change it again if you hate it and it's going to be okay so highly recommend that number four go on dates you know do things that you might not want to do things that you might not want to leave the house for so maybe that's signing up for classes or going to lectures or meetups or just putting yourself in uncomfortable situations and this might seem like a normal everyday thing for some of you and if that's the case good job keep doing it that's fantastic for me I'm a really big homebody or I can be I'm 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 pretty social and I like to be social but I'm in one of those introvert extroverts if you're familiar with Myers-Briggs I can go either way I can be very introverted and very extroverted so I need a lot of both time and 
for the past several years, I've been a big homebody. And this year, I really challenged myself to get out of the house more and say yes more and do things more. (laughs) And I'm really glad that I did. It was hard. I'm not going to say it was easy. It was really hard. And there were a lot of times where I had something on my calendar and I almost didn't go because I was cold or because I didn't feel like leaving the house or because I was tired or whatever. But I forced myself to go anyway. And I'm so glad that I did. So say yes, and do it and try things. Trust me, it's important. Next number, I think we're on number six. Say no a bunch as well. (laughs) I know that contradicts kind of the last thing I just said, but I also, as much as I said yes, I also wasn't afraid to say no. You know, I wasn't afraid to be at a party where I was feeling weird and say, I want to go home now and leave instead of lingering out of obligation when I had no desire to be there, you know, which I would have done in the past out of social weirdness. And now I'm just so unapologetically like, I want to leave now or this is what I want to do and maybe that comes with you know age I guess getting older or I think you know what it comes with is is knowing myself better I I actually know what I want and when you know what you want you can that's the first step to actually being able to do it so don't be afraid to say no I've said no to spending my time on projects that I just know are taking me away from the things I want to be focusing on. I have enough trouble focusing on all the ideas I have, much less other people's. And so saying no, I think, is is just as valuable as saying yes. And the balance is knowing when to do both, knowing when to push yourself and say yes to something that is out of your comfort zone but is still something that you want to do and saying no to something that takes you away from the direction you want to be going in, the growth that you want to have. All right, number seven, put happiness above health and don't feel guilty about that. So this might be an odd one for some people, but for me as a recovering orthorexic tending person, staying up late and drinking alcohol and eating sugar, all things that I didn't do religiously, dogmatically for so long, I started to do a little bit this year. Not a lot, but a little bit. And I think that was actually really healthy for me. But I still, you know, have some guilty, worry, beat myself up y feelings that come after I do those things. But this year, I've really decided to just let those go or at least push them away when they come up. And I highly suggest that. So basically, I'm telling you to just unapologetically have fun which hopefully you're a normal person and not a weirdo like me who is, you know, just already doing this. But in case you, like me, have been denying yourself pleasure and fun and normalcy in the world, (laughs) I'm giving you a big, huge wellness permission slip. So take it from me, from a girl who used to have a blog called The Wellness Wonderland. This is your permission slip and in big letters across the top of it, it says, all caps, like it's yelling at you, prioritize fun over health. I'll say that again. Prioritize fun over health. And then underneath that, this can be in lowercase, in a subtitle sort of a way, it would say, spoiler alert, that actually is healthier. So try that. Just have fun and don't freak out about food and sleep and all of those things. You'll be fine if you stay up late. You'll be fine if you eat some sugar. You'll be fine. You won't be fine if you miss your life because you're trying to make your body really perfect or you're trying to have the perfect health because that doesn't exist. And there are times to restrict and be dogmatic and you can try things and whatever. But for the most part, just don't miss your life and yeah, make your life your masterpiece, not your body, not your health. Enjoy yourself is what I'm trying to say. I hope that made sense. Okay, number eight, make new friends slash reconnect with the old friends. So I did both of these things this year and it felt great. I watched one of my oldest friends, my best friend from high school. I sat by my mom and I watched her get married and I sobbed. 
You guys, I sobbed uncontrollably. My mom was embarrassed of me. She literally turned to me and she said, you need to get it together. (laughs) You're making a scene. I was sobbing. It was just so emotional to me to see someone I've known for so long do this really big life thing. I'd watched other friends get married. I'd, I'd watched, you know, my best friend from college get married. I was in her wedding. It was beautiful. But there was something about seeing someone I've, I've known for so long get married that, that really just hit me. And, and it, it was someone that I didn't, I hadn't, I had kind of reconnected with, you know, I, I hadn't done a great job of keeping in touch with them. And I think that was why I was so emotional. So I think it's great to make new friends. And I've done that a lot this year as well. I visited new friends all over the country this year and in both experiences reconnecting with old friends and you know meeting and and spending time with new friends were very profound but I really highly suggest you know reach out to some people from high school maybe or you know reconnect with someone from your childhood I think they're a great link to your past and you know meeting them where you're at now is a really beautiful interesting thing that can happen so I highly suggest Make new friends and keep the old. One is silver and the other is gold. And you know what? I'll just say one other thing that my grandma said other than singing that song to me on the regular. She said this great thing where I I use the term best friend. I throw it around like candy. You know, I'm like, oh, I just met this person. They're my best friend. And she would always kind of make fun of me for that. And, you know, rightfully so because she had this line where she would say, you can fit your – the friends that are true friends on one hand so you know just take that in and I don't think there's anything wrong with having lots of friends you know I I consider you know all of you guys my friends but I think you know those those true people who you know will bring you soup when you're sick and you can call and just be like f you know like this terrible thing happened to me and they will just hear you out without trying to say, well, you know, but you do have this. Like, yeah, that, that's true and that's great, but you're not ready for that today. Today you just want to be heard. Those people, those are the ones that you can fit on your hand. So anyway, just take that in, do what you will with it. Number nine, walk a bunch. So listen, I went on a bunch of magical walks this year <laughs> and every year, I guess, but I love walking. I know it sounds silly, but I walked a ton by myself. I walked two places. I walked just to walk, I hiked in Hawaii, I hiked in the rain, I walked on the beach, I walked around New York City a bunch, I walked around Boston, I walked around LA, I walked with new babies, pushing them in strollers, I walked during really long phone conversations, I walked with my family, I walked with new friends, I walked with old friends, I walked a lot of places, and I got to know people during walks, I love walking you guys (laughs) and I just think everyone needs to take more walks whether it's cold outside whether it's really hot outside I'm saying this right now to really remind myself because I do a great job of this during the summer and when I'm traveling but I don't do a great job of this in the winter and I'm not saying that I'm gonna do this when it's super cold out and just not gonna do it although I did get a very warm coat that looks like a sleeping bag for Christmas so maybe I could But anyway, the point is I'm going to try to walk more in the winter when it's not the most comfortable to walk. So maybe we can like all do this together. Ooh, I know. We should make the emoji for this episode the walking dude. Let's do that. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. Next up, number 10, make up games and play them with your friends. So what I mean by this is be silly. Maybe you need to do improv classes. I did those a bunch. I'm probably going to do them more this year sing songs, make them up, generally just be more silly. I was hanging out with my friends Val and Pete a couple weeks ago, and Pete is a comedian who thinks in bits, and the two of them think in bits and communicate in bits, and it made me start to do that. When I came home, I'm, I'm still doing that. I'm like thinking in puns and silly jokes, and I'm actually saying them when I think them, even if they're really dumb and no one will laugh, but I think just do it. Pete had this thing in Hawaii where like he would say a joke and then he would go underwater and be and come back up and be like, did it get a laugh? (laughs) And, And just thinking about that makes me laugh because I think that's the way we should do it. You know, just if you think of something funny, even if you're like not sure if it's funny, just say it and then pretend like you're going underwater and then later be like, did it get a laugh? And who cares if it got a laugh or it didn't get a laugh? You said it and 
I don't know. I, I just think there's so much value to being silly, and I think we should just do it more. And it's, it's making me happy. All right, number 11. Go to the movies, watch movies, and talk about movies. Movies are really important to me. They've always been important to me. But find people who like the same movies as you. I think that's really cool. But I also think, you know, my best friend Amanda, who I talk about a lot, she doesn't generally like movies as much as I do, but I would force her to go to a lot of movies this year with me. And she liked them. (laughs) She might be listening to this and laughing. She liked a lot of them. Some of them she didn't like as much as others, and I loved them, and and I would, like, get angry, which is something I'm working on. (laughs) But anyway, my point is share movies with people, talk about movies with people, even though Amanda didn't love Don't Think Twice as much as I did. We still got to have a great conversation about it because we went together and it was an experience we had. And there were other movies that we did equally love that we could talk about. So anyway, I I just think going to the movies, watching movies on your computer is such a valuable experience. Watching movies alone and like feeling your feelings. I watched other people alone and sobbed and that was really cathartic. My, my therapist originally gave me this as a piece of homework because I, I think I've talked about this in the podcast, but, you know, I was walking around saying, oh, I feel so many feelings, but my therapist helped me realize that, oh, also she's coming on the podcast in 2017, coming soon. Anyway, she's great. But the point is she told me that I actually don't feel a lot of feelings. I think a lot of feelings, meaning I'm not in my body actually feeling what's going on. I'm in my mind thinking about what's going on. So movies and watching other people feel their feelings was really something that was able to help me unlock feeling my feelings myself, if that made sense. So maybe try it. Just try watching more movies and feeling your feelings by watching other people feel them. It it was a really good stepping stone for me that's been very cathartic and fun. Okay, number 12, cook healthy food and share it with people. I used to only cook for myself, and I haven't even really been doing that, but I, I was really lucky to have a lot of people cook for me this year. I My friend Steph made me this like beautiful dinner a couple months ago that still sticks with me as, as something that was really valuable and really meaningful to me, and she said something. She was like, this is the way I show love. I cook for people, and my best friend Amanda, who I, who I mentioned, cooked for me. You know, she I recently moved to L.A., but you know, she used to live here with me and and she cooked for me several times a week. And it was just such a beautiful sharing of love. And I don't really cook, but I want to start because other people have really inspired me to want to cook for other people because it was such a love for me and especially healthy food. Being someone who really loves and appreciates healthy food, I think it can be fun to and exciting to share something you love with other people. That's essentially what I do on this podcast. I share ideas and people that I love with other people because I think it's fun. So, you know, maybe share something healthy that you might not think people would like, but they might surprise you, you know? So maybe don't start, you know, don't like lead with like bee pollen and spirulina or something, you know? Maybe you can lead with like vegan cookies and avocado toast, something a bit more, you know, digestible. Anyway, just just a thought, something I might try. I kind of tried this year on the other end, but I'm going to flip it and try to cook more and share more. I used to be very like, oh, I like seaweed and I like these weird things, but I'm never going to tell anyone and just kind of embarrassed about it. But but recently I've been like sharing with, with new people in my life, you know, these are the things that I like to eat and they are kind of weird. But as my friend Sasha says, don't yuck my yum, which I think is like a great thing to say when it comes to trying new foods. Okay, number 13, have sleepovers. Have sleepovers with your best friends, have sleepovers with your boyfriends, with your girlfriends, with your couple friends, with everyone. Just have sleepovers. Adult camp is the best. There's something special that happens when you wake up and you spend a lot of time with people. This happens when I visit friends, when I visit Simi and Tim, who you guys know from the podcast, my best friends, when they visit me, I feel like it's summer camp and we're spending all of our time together. We're eating all of our meals together. I like the morning when people spend the night. There's like a vulnerability that happens then. I had multiple sleepovers a week with my best friend Amanda when she lived here. I'm going to visit her next week. I just think visiting people and having sleepovers as adults is really important. You know, like 
every night in college was a sleepover, essentially, you know, if you lived in the dorms or whatever. And, you know, when you're a kid, you probably have brothers and sisters. And if you have roommates, it's great. But, you know, if you're living alone or even with a, a partner or significant other, like, have a sleepover. Maybe you guys, like, sleep in the um, the kitchen. That'd be weird. But, like, in the family room on the couch or you, like, build a pillow fort or I don't know. Just I'm really into sleepovers as an adult. I don't know. Make a pillow fort. I did that this year a bunch. It's really fun. Just trust me, okay? All right. Number... 13. Okay, one thing I learned is that the best exercise for you is the one that you actually do. So switch up your exercise. I did a ton of yoga for many years. And this year, I realized that I'm not doing as much yoga. And that's okay. I'm doing more Pilates and walking and bar. Those are the things that are working for me right now. They're the things that are convenient that I am enjoying. And in the future, I know that that might change. It definitely will change. But in my current life situation, that's what's working. So figure out what that is for you and just work it into your schedule. Okay? Yeah, it's been helpful for me. But you do you. Okay, number 14. Listen to a lot of podcasts. So good job. Check. You're already doing this one (laughs) right now. But honestly, for me, podcasts for this year and the last several years, to be honest, they've been a game changer. I've made so many good friends. They've helped me feel less alone. They've connected me with cool ideas, cool people, interesting concepts. They've made me laugh. They've kept me company. They've helped me to learn a lot. I just love them. So shout out to podcasts. This is my favorite, favorite medium. I'm so glad it exists, and I'm so glad it's growing. Okay, number 15, listen to a lot of music. Even if you don't feel like it, force yourself to put something on. Just trust me. I find having a soundtrack to my life gives me, it just gives things more meaning. It makes things, it just generally, it's very helpful. I don't know why. Just put it on in the background whenever you can. And, you know, turn off a podcast, turn off an audiobook, and and, and force yourself to listen to music from time to time. I found I was actually listening to too much audio content where I wasn't listening to music for a while. So I really had to get myself back into listening to music and discovering new music because I know for me, that's really important. So just do that or don't. I I don't want to tell you to do anything. I don't know why I said that, but you know, this is something I tried is is my point. And also I feel like I'm yelling at you now. Whoops. (laughs) Okay. Last one. Number 16. If all else fails to make you grow and feel better as a person, just simply read or listen on Audible to Jen Sincero's book, You Are a Badass. Just trust me. I've read it mm, three times this year, and that's not even the other years. That's just this year. I don't know why that book is like, it just goes down like butter, real smooth. I don't even need butter. I don't know. goes down really smooth. I'll just say that. And also watch the movie Happy Thank You More, Please, Josh Radner's movie. Just trust me. I watched that movie probably upwards of four times this year, and I'm, you know, I'm probably going to watch it tonight. So listen, do those things. It's a cocktail for feeling better. Trust me, and maybe try the other things, but you can just start right here on number 16, and it'll, it'll already spawn you into good fortune in the new year. I don't know what I'm even saying at this point. It's very late at night. I love you guys so much. It's not even that late. I'm just tired. <laughs> okay, here's the point. Let me get right to it. I wish you guys, I wrote this down, so I'm, I'm like kind of summarizing, but I also wrote this down in full disclosure. But these are the things I want for myself and I also want for you guys, so this is it. Okay, here we go. I wish you guys wild synchronicities, clear skin, deep, honest conversations, belly laughter, creative inspiration, an abundance of money, time, and energy to do all those creative things that you want to do, And I wish you a whole lot of peacefulness in 2017. Those are the things that I want. Like I said, those are the things that I want for you too. And I love you guys so much. The emoji for this episode is going to be the walking man or woman. Is there a walking woman? Let me know. Send me an emoji of someone walking. And I love you guys. Just, you know, you can tweet that emoji at me. You can leave it in a comment on an Instagram There's going to be a lot of really good podcasts coming out in 2017 in general and on this specific feed. So make sure you're subscribed, share this episode with anyone you think it would be helpful for, and thank you so much for listening. 
Leaving a comment on iTunes is very helpful. If you could leave me some stars or, you know, just one star even helps. I don't know if that helps, but, you know, leave as many stars as you want to leave. And share it. Anything else that I wanted to say? I don't know. I just think I love you guys a lot. And I'll talk to you later. All right. Love you. Bye.